Hi guys, it's Amanda Watson from MrsWatsonEducation.com and this is my fourth video in a series of posts about how to create a virtual classroom Bitmoji style. So hopefully you've already seen my last um, three blogs about creating the room, inserting your Bitmoji, and sharing it in the different ways. This one's all about bringing your Bitmoji classroom to the next level by adding new rooms. Now, if you've joined the Bitmoji Craze for um, Educators group on Facebook, you've been probably bombarded with so many great ideas about um, and rooms that people are sharing so willingly and generously to um, help others. And that's where I started thinking, like, I could do more with this because I started with my first classroom, just what you see on the screen right here. And then I was like, there's so much more I can do. And I figured out a way to really easily link it to make it work almost like a website in the simple sharing. My next video will be about making it look like be an actual website, but this is really awesome here. Okay, so what you need to do for this, what we need to know is let me go ahead and go into my full view, my full screen view, so you can see everything, okay? So the first slide was my original classroom. I made this and designed this with having this whole thing in mind, okay? I thought about what do I need my students to see? Agenda, big, bold, right in the middle. I need them to have access to their resources. I have a bookcase to showcase those. I have laptops on the table. Um, I have a filing cabinet over there on the side. I have a calendar on the wall. All these things I put with purpose into my uh, virtual classroom. And here's where the purpose gets really greatly linked together to um, these other slides. So I'm going to quickly just go through the different rooms I've created. Um, I'm not going to spend time on how to create them because that should have been what you learned in the first one, just the same thing, but adapting it to different rooms. Um, so my second slide is my about me because I wanted the students to click on me and be able to get to my about me. Um, and I just created that with boxes and designs. Um, I, entered, I made a little video of me and my family. And it's a really simple, beautiful page. I think I was able to get the my doggy's background erased. It looks so cool. So I love that. And every time I went into a new room, I changed my outfit on my Bitmoji to make it a little bit more custom. Kids get a hoot with, um, get a laugh out of that. So my second slide is a library um, bookcase, right? It's a reading library. So if you have younger kids, you might actually have it linked to read alouds. Um, I would link this to specific science books if they're like, if they're um, maybe they're, Am they're Amazon or this classic news fair or book fair. Um, what's it called, like the previews and stuff. But what I use mine for is I link it to my digital textbook and I have um, PDF files and the um, e-files of the digital textbooks and that's gonna help facilitate, especially that distance learning. Um, this bookcase I actually made on Google Slides just using different kind of uh, boxes and manipulating that in lines. There's a lot of other bookcases online, but remember with these slides, everything you're seeing in these slides was either created by me personally, or I found using open and free copyright because I knew I was sharing this on YouTube and I wanted to make sure that I had um, materials that I made in there to show you that you can do it without kind of using um, freedoms of your fair use as a teacher. Use it if you need to in certain situations, but sharing to the public, I didn't want to mess with that. So very cool design there. Um, this, I'm a science teacher, so I wanted to make a room. My actual room that I share privately with my students looks way different with this. There's a lot of chaos going on, but this is uh, just a simple lab safety. I would be able to have all the rules there and I'd be able to link a quiz in there um, like you saw in the different classrooms. So this would be linked up. I just hyperlink that to a Google Forms quiz that they would take um, during virtual learning um, to be able to show me lab safety, even though they shouldn't be doing labs in virtual learning. I don't know how that's going to work out as things progress. My next room is, I'm a big fan. Well, my county requires it. I really wasn't a big fan prior to this. I've converted and understand the, um, the needs of this and why it's so important for all learners. But um, remediation and offering retakes for assessments. Like I said, my county kind of forced me to do this and now I'm, I'm on board. So I like to plan way, 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 way ahead. I am um, I'm going on hopefully my fourth year teaching science in sixth grade. I don't know what I'm teaching yet because they haven't told us anything for this next coming August, but I think so. Um, so I already know my curriculum really well. So I already have each of these buttons linked to remediation worksheets I've converted into Google Forms. If you don't know how to do that, I have a blog for that. So you can look into that and see a blog with a 20 minute YouTube video showing you how to do that and the quiz retakes um, and their test retakes. So that's all there already. I made it so you'll see in the blog 
blog how I made it private. There's a password to protect it and how that works. But this is a room I needed, so I needed two whiteboards because I knew I had a lot of clickable button information, but I wanted to make it like, look like a room so it wasn't so flat and I could add my Bitmoji character to the floor of a room. Um, my filing cabinet, I have it linked over here. So this is where I teach my presentations with my notes and all my materials and videos. They could all go here. Um, so after a unit, I could just link it here or during the unit and students throughout the year will be able to go back and hopefully study the material that they forgot as we're getting nearing the end of the year for the tests. So that's kind of nice there. My last slide was just where I was building actually those, those, um, those items that you see in the pages. So that's just an overview of what the rooms are. There's so many more things you can do. That's just what I made for mine and I wanted to share with you, but you could make as many rooms as you want and this is how I connect them. So I built this first page as my home page. I knew it was going to be my home page. So everything I put in there was a, had a purpose. So if my students click on this box, I'm going to link it to that slide. So assessment reading mediation is slide number five. This is how you do that. I'm going to click on that box. I'm going to hit, oh, I don't, sorry. I'm going to click on the box, not the text. I'm going to link it to a slide in this presentation. I'm going to go to slide number, if it's on the bottom, it gets a little wonky. Number five, oh, see, told you it gets a little wonky. One, two, five. Okay, hit apply. And now when students click on this, it's going to take them automatically to this slide. If I change my slides around, so now that's slide number four, it's going to automatically take them to slide number four. I love Google. Okay, so I could do that with each of my um, things. So I'm not going to go actually do that physically because that's going to take more time on this video and you guys just want to get to actually doing this yourselves. So I would I connect my assessment, my files to my filing cabinet slide, the textbook to my library slide, lab safety to my library, um, my lab safety slide. I have all of these already linked as I wanted to different resources. I could connect my calendar. So calendar is a little different. So you can have like a calendar slide where you type in things. That's totally fine. I use Google calendars because I could drag and drop things. I'm going to have a whole other box blog posts in the future when I get some time about how I um, lesson plan and use Google Calendar for that. But I made that in a Google site and so I'll be able to use that and connect that URL from that Google site straight to my calendar. Um, but like I said, that's a whole other post. Um, so that's all connected. So now when I go into presentation mode, they can click those and it'll take them there. But the last thing, um, once you get to the pages, you may have noticed on the bottom of every page, I have a little Bitmoji that I typed in. It's, um, I actually like got a Bitmoji with a blank sign. I typed in back into it with using a Google slide. I saved that as a picture. I got rid of the background again, and then I added it to a blue button um, and grouped those two things together. Lots of steps, but worth it. Okay. So now every, this, if every time the student sees this page, if they hit here, it's gonna take them back to the first slide of the document. Um, so that's going to make it more interactive like a website would be. Um, and you do that for each slide. Now, here is a little thing, a little pro tip about hidden slides. If you use the presentation mode, um, specifically the presentation mode where you get rid of the um, menu bar on the bottom, watch my last video if you don't know how to do this, it's mine blowing, okay? Um, you don't want your students to be able to, well, I don't want to, you may not care. I don't want my students to be able to click through, like if they click where there's not a link, it will automatically move them forward to the next slide because it's technically presenting a slideshow presentation and that's what you want from a traditional slideshow presentation, not my website, right? So um, what you do then is you can select all the slides that you don't want to be your home page, go up to the top where it's a slide, and hide them. This is going to make them invisible, right, to, um, except for the home page when you do that presentation sharing, okay? Um, so that's the easy fix. Now the other thing that's a little bit more difficult to do, um, but worth it, is on each individual slide, you're going to want to create a like kind of a click screen, I'm going to call it. I don't know what else to say for it. I'm going to make a box. I'm going to make it transparent. I'm going to get rid of all of the lines. So it's a box that's covering all of my items. Now I'm going to slide that box to the side just so I know where it's at. I'm going to click on everything in my library that I would want to be interactive still. Maybe I have like 
uh, on me, but maybe on this it's like directions or a link to an author or something. I'm going to control shift up or bring them all forward, which means now, even though I just put this slide on, they are going to be placed in front of this box, okay? So they're still clickable, but everything else behind that, if I click it, kind of becomes frozen, which is also kind of nice there, okay? These are all still clickable, which means when you publish it, they'll be able to have clickable URLs. But what's the bigger part? Why did I do that? One, like I said, it kind of freezes everything in the back if you don't want to do a screenshot and upload it as a, a background. But if you link this, okay, so it's slide page number three, to page three in the, so you're basically linking this box to the page itself. When you do that presentation mode and the students go on and click um, the digital textbook and they get to the slide, if they want, um, oh, I forgot, sorry. You're gonna want to have this guy go forward too. <laughs> I know that wasn't that big of a deal for this tutorial video, but I'm a perfectionist and I couldn't let that slide. Sorry. Okay. So now when they get to this slide in your presentation mode that you share with everybody, they're going to be able to click on the books that you have hyperlinked to whatever book, read aloud, chapter unit, whatever you have. They're going to be able to click here and it's going to go back to the home page. But anything else they click on is going to just keep them where they are on this page instead of clicking them forward to the next slide, even though it's hidden. Um, once it gets into those hidden things, once they get to a hidden page, it will automatically progress them if you don't have that kind of cheat there. So that's just a little quick thing. Um, the basics there, I think with all the other videos, you should be able to figure out how to do this. I know it's fast, but I don't want this video to be as long as some of the other ones have been. So in uh, the blog um, post, I'm going to be putting, like I said, some copies of these slides that you can see right here so you can use them or not and adjustable. You can't really adjust them because I'm making background, um, but you can use them or not or use, be inspired by them. I don't care. And hopefully the next video will be all about making this actual website and how it needs to publish it to the web and how I kind of did the Google sites and made that work a little bit for me because of my conditions at my district, okay? But anyways, um, if you have any other questions, always go to www.mrswatsoneducation.com for my posts and more information. It was good seeing you. Hopefully you're learning lots and happy, creating rooms, so many rooms. I could do so many cool things. I love this stuff. Have a good time, bye.